What's the good word, Josh? Boy, DKB here. So the Hall of Fame game has come and gone. Uh, the New York Jets taking L to start the season 21-16 against the Cleveland Browns. And, uh, you know, just having football back was fun. It was an actually relatively exciting match. Um, seeing a couple people that we couldn't wait uh, hit the field. The Jason Brownleys, of course, Zach Wilson. Uh, we've seen a lot more of Israel Abandikanda than I expected. Um, some of the defensive guys that were making plays and so this is more so just a quick recap uh you know for others that might not um uh, been able to watch it themselves of course and then of course um my reaction just thoughts on kind of what i was able to see from the few highlights um i'm going to check some things out actually later on we'll chat about it probably monday uh or if i can fit a scream in this weekend uh we'll do that so either jets flight squad podcast or you guys will see me again later um but Nonetheless, let's go ahead and dive into some of the highlights. So when it came to rookie Israel Bandikanda, um, you know, stat sheet wise, things didn't look great. I believe the New York Jets actually finished as a team under 3.0 yards uh, per carry, uh, which is pretty porous, right? You would expect that maybe both teams, you know, the Browns and the Jets either do really good or they do really terribly. I didn't think there was a significant talent gap um, between the two teams, but the Browns seem to have been able to do what they wanted, uh, whereas the New York Jets, we definitely struggled. And so, uh, you know, not being able to check things out, I don't know if it was pushed from the line, if Israel, uh, you know, just didn't hit the holes. Uh, was he running east to west as opposed to north to south? Uh, and, you know, not necessarily being that one cut guy that we need. There's a lot for me to check into there. But, uh, you know, at, at surface level, it at least seemed like it was a decent night overall, right? He was able to go out there and get himself a rushing touchdown. Then you take a look at, uh, you know, Demarie Crockett, which was another guy we just picked up. <clears throat> we got to see him a little bit, especially in the fourth quarter, uh, where we did get a fumble out of him, though. And, you know, luckily the New York Jets were able to hop on it. But uh, not an overly impressive debut by any of our guys by any stretch of the imagination. So it was already going to be a tough uphill climb for a guy like Demarie Crockett to really make any noise on this roster. But uh, having turnover concerns, um, you know, is definitely not going to help his argument by any means. Then we take a look at the wide receivers. Xavier Gibson, he fumbles on a return, I believe. And then uh, the very next return, we see him uh, spark a, a kickoff for 45 yards um, towards the end of the second quarter. So that was going to be his bread and butter if he was going to make the team um, in his rookie year uh, instead of hitting the practice squad. So we're already seeing the big playability there for him. Uh, the problem is going to be how do they squeeze him on the roster otherwise. His skill set mainly is going to be in the slot this season. Um, and outside of that, there wasn't really anything impressive that happened. Uh, I believe there's a deep drop um, by him. It didn't help his cause either. We did get a Zach Wilson and Malik Taylor uh, connection, 50 plus yards. I think it was actually 57 yards specifically. Um, and, you know, that was a big play. And I heard somewhere that Aaron Rodgers actually dialed that up for Zach Wilson um, to, you know, kind of get things going after he went three and out on his first series. So, uh, <laughs> you know, one of, it's always somebody that comes out of the blue. Um, during preseason that, you know, nobody's aware of. I haven't heard anything about Malik Taylor the entirety of training camp. <clears throat> and he makes the biggest play on the night for the New York Jets. So, uh, you know, fun night for him. I'm sure it was good that Zach Wilson was able to show off some of that arm talent. I thought from what I was, again, it, it's a few highlights I was able to see. He didn't look bad. Even on the three and out, uh, there was a situation where, uh, you know, he, he basically threw it to the open receiver. He wasn't forcing the issue. And you've seen the same thing on his second drive. Uh, you know, I want to say it was right after or right before the big play to Malik Taylor where, um, you know, he didn't force the issue. Um, he was getting ready to get sacked. He was able to show some of that escapability again, try to rush uh, for the first down, which he wasn't able to get. But um, <clears throat> it's leaps and bounds better than the preseason we saw last year where he looked completely lost, unsure about how he wanted to attack the defense. And uh, it, it was just a nice progression uh, on a night that didn't have any obvious poorest moments for him. And, and, you know, he at least got a big highlight out there. Um, my guy, this is the guy I can't wait to go back and check the highlight film for uh, and, and just the game overall. 
Chaz Surratt, the linebacker, he was able to go out and make some plays, uh, racked up a few tackles, got himself an interception to make his name uh, known, uh, you know, under the lights. So happy to see that he was one of the standouts from this game, if you were going to pick one on the defensive side. Um, but overall, talking about the defense, um, we'll get to them in a minute. One of the last players I wanted to talk about was Jason Brownlee. Now, he started off pretty solid in the game. Uh, two targets, gets two catches. I think it only went for like 12 yards uh, total on the two. Uh, but I think the the main takeaway here is <clears throat> I want to say he had about five or six targets on the night. When you take a look at, uh, <clears throat> I believe it was the second quarter and it was winding down in the second half. He was targeted on all right. This was right after Xavier Gibson's uh, big return kickoff. Jason Brown was targeted on all three of those plays. Uh, a couple deep passes and I think one that was shorter. Um, now, I'm not sure what happened there. Was it a contested catch situation in each one of those? Did he drop them? Was it just excellent coverage? I'm not sure, but... Uh, I think it shows uh, the faith that the quarterback room already has in Jason Brownlee that he was the primary target for the majority of this game, for sure. Um, now, switching over to the defense, wasn't overly thrilled, um, even with the you know talent that we've amassed. There definitely still seems like there's a huge drop off from our starters to even our second string, uh, and then of course you know the rest of the backups on the team. We you know let uh, a couple big drives go off, uh, a 17 play drive towards the end of the second quarter, uh, which got them on the board for the first time. We let an 11 play drive go down, uh, where they went 93 yards, so they covered the entirety of the field. <clears throat> that was midway through the third quarter, and then early in the fourth, uh, you know, they rip off another nine-play drive. So a lot of what I've seen, uh, you know, there was a couple penalties and stuff um, that, that makes up, you know, some of those drives. Um, so kind of a sloppy game overall from that standpoint. But you also go back, and what I saw was there was a lot of uh, uh, the running backs attacking this defense. A lot of the screens are still coming up uh, and our inability to stop those. So, um, you know, we got to go to the drawing board, get ready for this next game. But the early signs are, at least for our backups, is that there's going to still be an issue with us uh, defending against screens uh, and more so specifically probably running backs at this moment um, we either didn't really have a man necessarily close or our open field tackling was pretty bad so um, we'll see how that pans out but overall it was a fun night uh, from what I was able to you know tune into and check out uh, can't wait to really dive back into the film but let me know what your guys' thoughts were how did the game go? Who excited you the most? Um, and, you know, what did you think overall as a whole? And I'll catch you guys again. Peace.